Hey, hi, Dr. Nishit here. I'm the founder of Classify RX app. Classify RX is a crisp revision app for pharmacology preparation. You can check out the app with the link in the description below. In this video, we are going to use few of the illustrations present inside the Classify RX and try to learn about the mechanism of action of unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and fondaparinox. As we can see, all these three molecules are polysaccharides of variable length. And how do they act? They act by inhibiting activated coagulation factors, factor 10 or factor 2 or both of them. So activated factor 2 is nothing but thrombin. And these polysaccharides do not directly bind to the activated coagulation factors, but they bind antithrombin 3 and activates the antithrombin 3. The activated antithrombin 3 inhibits the coagulation factors. Now we will divide the activity of these polysaccharides into anti-10A activity and anti-2A activity. Initially we will look into anti-10A activity. So this antithrombin 3 binds to particular pentasaccharide sequence which is the part of these polysaccharides and then gets activated. This binding and subsequent activation is all that is enough for anti 10A activity. Okay, As you can see all the three molecules have this pentasaccharide sequence and they all have similar anti 10A activity. Now we will further move on to anti 2A activity. For anti-2A activity, along with binding of antithrombin 3, the polysaccharide units must be more than 18 units in length. So these longer polysaccharide units will serve as a catalytic template to which both antithrombin 3 and activated factor 2 will be bound. After this binding, activated factor 2 will be inhibited. Now that we know what is essential for anti-2A activity, we can learn about differential anti-2A activity. Unfractionated heparin preparations have almost all of their molecules more than 18 units in length so that their anti-2A activity is equal to anti-10A activity. Whereas in low molecular weight heparin preparations, only some of the molecules are more than 18 units in length so that their anti-2A activity is less than anti-10A activity. Whereas fondoporinox is a pentasaccharide which has no anti-2A activity. We will look into individual molecules for better understanding. Now, let's look into unfractionated heparin preparations. These preparations have a mean molecular weight of 15,000 and that would mean almost all molecules have more than 18 saccharide units. As you can see here, along with binding to the pentasaccharide sequence of antithrombin 3, these molecules are long enough to bind both antithrombin 3 and factor 2A. This would ensure that the ratio of 10A to 2A inhibition is 1 is to 1. That means there is a more complete inhibition of coagulation cascade. So now what are the clinical implications of knowing this? We all know that the primary indication of parenteral anticoagulants is for treatment and prophylaxis of thrombosis. But at present is the low molecular weight heparin or fondoparinox which is preferred over unfractionated heparin because of its pharmacokinetic and safety advantages. But in certain conditions like cardiopulmonary bypass circuits, unfractionated heparin is preferred over other forms of heparin and fondoparinox. In this cardiopulmonary bypass circuits, a large amount of factor 12 is activated by the external systems. This in turn 
increases the activation of coagulation cascade. A more complete inhibition of coagulation by unfractionated heparin is preferred during this procedure. Now let's move on to low molecular weight heparin preparations. These preparations have a mean molecular weight of 4000 to 6000. That would mean 50% or less of those molecules will have more than 18 saccharide units. So it translates into only half or less than half of the molecules inhibiting both factor 10 and factor 2. Whereas the pentasaccharide sequence is present in all the molecules so that the factor 10 inhibition is complete. Now this translates to a ratio of 10A to 2A inhibition to double or more than double. Now moving on to the fondoporinox. Fondoporinox is a synthetic preparation of the pentasaccharide which binds to the pentasaccharide binding unit of antithromic 3. It inhibits the factor 10A and it has no action against factor 2A so that the ratio of inhibition always remains 1 is to 0. Thank you. I hope you have all understood mechanism of action of different heparin preparations and fondoporinox. Do subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social media channels. Link for them is present in the description below. Thank you.